Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Appreciate you guys watching these videos. And she would say that you actually came here because of other videos, right? Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things you said, like it's not hard for you to make this video. But why don't you just describe like what symptoms you had and then why you chose to come here and then how has the response been to prolotherapy and curve correction? So I started about last May, so uh, May of 2021, I had, I started with... So a year ago, a little over a year ago. Yeah, yep. I started having this horrific itching and it was to the point where it just kept getting worse and worse, just on my arms. And um, it got to the point where it was interfering with my work, with my sleep, um, just my daily life. And it was, I was miserable. I like 24 seven. Yeah. 24 seven. I would sleep with ice packs. I just couldn't stop the itching. Did you take antihistamine or did you see a dermatologist? Did you... Yes, I did. I, I, I took all that stuff. I, mm -hmm. I saw a dermato. I saw several doctors actually that didn't know anything about what this was. Okay. So it finally took a doctor at the university of Michigan to say, to diagnose me with brachial radial paritis. So at that point, um, I, out of pure desperation, did so much research and I researched you and I found you and I just said, this has gotta be the way to go. I, kind of a, you know, I was completely desperate because I couldn't function this way. So that's when I found you and I decided I'm gonna give it a try and, um, after you said I had a pretty severe case in after the first prolotherapy treatment. Well, we had, you had curve issues, then you had some significant right. instability. So then yeah. you went on a course to get your curve better. Yep. And then yep. you needed some prolotherapy. So you. So, so today so, I'm here for my third treatment, but. So after the first one, then how, tell so us what happened. After the first one, I would say I was about 75% better with the itching. Um, it got that much better. And then after the second treatment, I would say if I had to guess, I'm probably 98% okay. better with okay. the itching. So I, I have little flare ups here and there, but very little. And I did curve correction weights. And so my spine or my neck was straight. And now I have a really good curve. So I guess it's working really well. <laughs> yeah, and then we would probably agree, you know, 75% of the instability is resolved. Then you and I will just have a talk about, you know, is this your last visit or... Right. Um, then tell us what it feels like to have brachial radial pruritus. Like what, it's like intense. Oh, it is so intense. You feel like yeah. and needles. You were, well, and even here you could see like you, you know, like you basically scratch so much. Mm -hmm. Like, in other words, this is like normal skin, right. but this is actually thickened. Yes. So you're saying to me, if I saw you uh, a year ago, well, no, no. If I saw you two years ago, was this skin like this skin? Yes, it was. In fact, I also had a major rash breakout during that time. And I don't know if that had to do with that, but I assumed it did because it just itched so bad. And I had, um, it was something that could not be satisfied. It's an itch that cannot be satisfied. And Even with steroid creams and anti, uh, antihistamines, and that's a good way to put it. It I, can't be satisfied. Right, and the only thing that did help was pregabalin, but okay. I did not want to be continue to be on medicine. I wanted to get to the bottom of it okay. to solve it. So that's why I found you, and I thought this is a really good option. I think you know, I, I could cure it, <laughs> so. Yeah, was there clues here? So, okay, so you have this terrible itching, you go on Google or you go on YouTube mm -hmm. and then you're searching. Was there something, was there something else that you thought, well, maybe it is my neck? Cause you know, so brachial, brachial is the brachial plexus mm -hmm. here, uh, ri radicular or radicular paritis. So brachial means brachial plexus radicular means like a pinch nerve or a s nerve that's irritated in your neck. So we didn't do, I didn't do anything with your shoulders because I felt your... You did the first treatment. Oh, I did. Yeah, okay. and then the second 
Um, you just did a little bit up okay. here. But yeah, that's Okay, so I did, I must have then found some shoulder instability. You did, On yes. the first visit, but by the mm -hmm. second visit, the shoulder instability was already resolved. Right. Um, so the, the nerves here form then the brachial plexus. So you, so say somebody had a little bit of instability here and a little bit of instability here, like nothing like overwhelming, but the combination of it then was enough to irritate the nerves. Now the normal person, well normal's not right, the average person who had irritation of nerves of course would have pain, right. but, but pain and itching are carried by the same nerves, you know, pretty much. So, so a person watching this and they have itching, what they should do is see the distribution of where they have itching and see what nerve innervates the skin there. So like say you had itching here, this might be the C6 nerve. So this might be the C6 nerve okay. that goes there, the C6 nerve. Then you might say, do I have symptoms in my shoulder or in my neck? So did you have any of that? Did you have any clicking, popping, grinding in your neck? Did you have neck pain? I guess I never really noticed it until I started paying attention, but okay. I did have, I had grinding, like I could hear the grinding. So yeah, it was very interesting to learn about that. Well, I, once, once you probably researched it and then you had grinding, then you had this and you're like, no, 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 I got neck instability. Yes, right? for yeah. sure. I, I knew immediately. I actually had figured this out before the U of M doctor told me that because I was so desperate that I researched all that and I, I figured that was it, but I, I need, okay. you know, I, I trust the doctors to tell me. And, um, but a lot of doctors I have found do not know what this is. They, okay. They've never heard of it. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's really frustrating. So that's out of pure desperation. I researched, you know, you, and I was very confident that you could help me. So. Here I am, and you did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, then you got a little teary eye. Like it's been really yeah. tra dramatic. Traumatic. It was devastating. Yeah, devastating. I mean, I had just completed chemotherapy, and a few weeks later, I started developing this horrible itching. So it started right here and right here. Okay. And then it moved up and just did encompass the whole arm. So okay. I was already exhausted from chemotherapy, and this just this was almost actually worse than chemotherapy. <laughs> Honestly, it was so, cause I couldn't get rid of it. It was 24 seven okay. itching, miserable itching. Okay. So yeah, it was very, very difficult. It affected my entire life. So I was very desperate to find uh, help for it. So. Did, and how's that doing? Like the key, you're done with the chemotherapy and you're. Yes, I'm you, cancer did, free. Yes. Oh, congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you've had a lot of stuff go on in the last. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough year and a half, but I am so grateful to be done with the itching because that, that's almost the worst thing I've ever experienced. Like it just, you can't. Well, chemotherapy too, you get chemotherapy, you feel bad, but then you start feeling good again. This mm -hmm. is like what you said. It's like a non, nothing could satisfy the itch. Right. Nothing could satisfy. Here, let's just go back. So you got neck instability. So did you have any, you had clicking, popping, grinding. Did you have mm -hmm. any neck pain? Did you have any headaches? Did you have digestive things? Did you have any of the, of the things that some of our patients have who have neck instability or really you didn't have any of that? I didn't have neck pain, but I, I definitely hold all my stress in my neck. So I had a sore, so maybe it could have been that and I just didn't know okay. it because I, I kept, I hold all my stress right in my shoulders. So um, as far as that goes, it could have been very easily. I just, okay. you know, it was definitely, and my body was just so messed up. So I'm not sure yeah, that's if true. I could point to that, but I definitely, I can say I noticed how much I was looking down and during chemo you kind of scrunch up okay. and I think that's probably part of it right yeah. and I realized how much I actually looked down so I changed my whole life I bought a desk that lifts up and you know I just changed I look up 
so much more and I'm very aware of my posture now. And so I think I've tried to help myself in those areas as well to yeah. get better. So I think that's helped include, you know, after therapy, just trying to help myself as well in those areas to keep it from coming back. Oh, totally. So, totally. yeah. No, and then we always just recommend, you know, once you're done, just once a year, just get a neck x-ray. Because, you know, as long as you maintain the curve, there's no, you know, you, it shouldn't come back. You just got to maintain the curve. It's when you had that straight curve or the slight reversal of the curve, it puts too much strain on the ligaments. And then, of course, your body was in an anti-inflammatory state, if you will. You were taking chemotherapy, which, of course, inhibits the body's ability to repair because it right. it's something that's aggressive to kill the cancer. Right. So the combination of it, like, yeah, then you're probably like reading a lot with your cell phone or this or that. Yes. And then your body can't repair during the night because, you know, you got all that chemotherapy going through right. you. So then, but very tough. Yes. So somebody sure. watching this, it's totally doable prolotherapy. I mean, you know, some people are afraid of shots or they, you know, they're just, you know, like they just don't like shots. So how is it doable to do oh, it? Oh yeah. yeah, it's absolutely doable. I mean, you know, you offer pain relief or, you know, pain options med Medications to that medication. people can take before right. they get the prolo, yeah. It hurts. It hurts a little bit. Hurts, yeah, yeah, it definitely hurts. But honestly, I was so desperate that I was willing to do anything. Okay. So it was fine with me. I mean, it hurt, but it was, it, the pain medicine was great. and. Um, I just needed a little more uh, the next time because it, it did hurt, but I mean, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't unbearable at I can all. just say this, you know, I'm just trying to think in the 30 years that I've been doing prolotherapy, I don't know of a patient that we had to do prolotherapy again for brachial pruritus or, well, you know, I call cervical pruritus okay. or brachial radicular pruritus. Just no, you know, it should be, you should be fine you know, the rest of your life as it, as it relates to this. And then I sure as long as you so. maintain your neck curve, you'll be fine. But right. just so much appreciate you telling your story. Absolutely. I appreciate you very, very you know, much. Give me a hug. Okay. <laughs> Thank hey. you. Thank you. And then we'll get ready for your next one. Yes. Thank okay. you.